Greetings Earthlings, this is Han from Hacker Academy. This is our first YouTube video ever, so thanks for watching. Um, so this video is going to be about what happened during the first Net Talk, um, the introduction to programming talk. We ran out of time, so I want to take this opportunity to go over the uh, Spring Physics Simulation Program again in C, so that for the curious people and people who couldn't follow, um, hopefully this can give you a better explanation and walk you through on how the code works. So let's get started. So basically, let me just reiterate what we want to do. We basically want to simulate um, how a spring attached to a ball would oscillate around the pole. So imagine. So what we're going to do is have, imagine this is the console, and then we're going to have a pole in the middle. The console is 80 characters wide. We have 40, somewhere 40 in the middle, that's where the pole is. And then we're going to stretch the ball out, attached by a string, all the way to the edge, and then release. So after we release, there's going to be some force on the ball that's going to act on the ball, and then the ball is going to oscillate around the pole like this forever. Okay, so that's basically the program we want to do. Okay, so let's get started. So I'm actually going to show you how to use NetBeans and to create this project from scratch, so you can do this yourself at home. So let's go create a new application. Go to C++ application, and we're going to call this Spring Ball. Okay, make sure you choose C. If you want to use C++, you can do so. Do so. In, in this case, we're going to just use, going to use C. So let's go to our source files, go to main.c, and that's our source, source file. Okay, so we don't actually need any of these comments, so let's delete them. Okay. Uh, actually, the first thing you want to do is actually go to the properties and change your console type to external terminal. That's okay. So this way, at least the print terminal will pop up, and then you can actually see it on a separate string. The output here is actually pretty, uh, pretty crap. So I never use it. I always use external console, just so I know it is 80 characters wide, and I can control the output. Okay, so let's begin. First thing we want to model is a ball, right? So we want to model any physical object with physical characteristics, so we need things like mass, acceleration, velocity, that kind of stuff. So to model a ball object, we in C, we're going to just use a struct. So we're going to type def a struct, and then we're going to declare some of its properties. So mass, acceleration, velocity, and position. So this will be the type called ball. What else do we need to know? We need to know uh, spring force. So at any at any instant, the how much the force is acting on the ball. We initialize that to zero. We need the spring constant. Let's just give it a one. So the spring constant is basically used to calculate the force, which is equals to minus kx. So for those who don't know, this is Hooke's law. Um, we also need a time step. So basically what the time step is, um, we have to basically simulate this spring action over time. So what we're going to do is we're going to get where the ball is every 0 0.1 seconds. Well not really every 0 0.1 seconds, but in this case we use 0 0.1 um, because we, you want, you're, you're going to see we actually use a delay later. So it's not really accurate, but um, for, for the purpose of the time we're going to use 0 0.1. And uh, that's pretty much it. We also need the ball type. Make sure to declare the ball type, and then we need to initialize its values. Um, dot dot mass equals to. We need some mass for the ball. Velocity equals to zero. Ball dot acceleration equals to zero. And ball dot position. We're gonna. We're actually gonna put the position to minus thirty nine. Why is that? So we're actually going to consider this location. The first cursor is minus 39. Location cursor location 39 is actually 0, and then this is 40. And you will see why in a second. Because initially we're actually stretching that out, so it's at position 39, initial position 39. Okay. And so in the beginning we're going to do some while loop. Okay. So there's no exit condition yet. 
So we, we're just going to do true for simplicity. First thing to do is calculate the spring force. Okay, spring force is equals, equals to minus kx, so it's minus spring constant multiplied by the ball position. So once we have the force, we can find the acceleration. To find the acceleration, simply have the spring force divided by the ball mass. Right? Simple. And then to get the velocity, how do we get the velocity? So remember we're going through a time step here. We're looping through time. We're looping through periods of 0 0.1 seconds over and over again. So in order to get the velocity, you multiply by the change in time, which is t step, right? Basic physics, velocity equals to acceleration times time. And the same thing for position. You multiply velocity by the t step. Ooh, what's this? T step. All right. So, but you have to remember that velocity and position is always changing because let's say the first moment that you have some acceleration on the ball, right? The next moment the acceleration will change because you're on a different position, which means the velocity will change at a different rate. So, but you're still accelerating, right? which means these actually have to be plus equals to because the next moment the, uh, the ball is accelerating you need to add its new velocity to its old velocity and then based on that you need to in you need to increase or decrease its position based on its new velocity and they're all based on the time step right and this is pretty much it if you just want to simulate physics, say over a period of time, you can just run this program and it will work, right? But we want to actually show this on the screen and have the character bounce around. So how do we do that? It's a very simple draw program. You actually draw a character based on its correct location and then erase it. Actually put some delay and then erase it. So what we're going to do is uh, first, just for clarity's sake, put some new lines so we can see better second thing is we actually want to draw some blank lines so in C there's no functions that you can actually uh, right just justify or left justify characters so we actually have to write a function to draw blanks it's a very simple function so we're gonna draw call it print blanks takes an int number to zero for i i smaller than num plus thirty nine i plus plus and then print f then okay so let me tell you how this works so basically uh, remember the characters right this is considered minus thirty nine but this is crucial location zero. So when it's minus 39, you need to add 39 in order to get its zero location. Is that correct? What did I just say? Yes. So, um, if the ball is at minus 39 location, Okay, which is here, it's cursor zero. So you have to think about when you're printing blanks, you don't want to print any blanks when it's actually zero. So minus 39 plus 39 will be zero. Okay, so that, that's correct. Got confused there for a second. Okay, so we're going to print blanks. Um, what are we passing here? We're going to pass in ball.position. So notice that this is an int and this is a double. We're not going to round it. We're just going to take the floor of uh, whatever double gives um, for simplicity's sake. Okay, once you print the blocks, you can print the uh, ball character. We're going to just use a O as the ball. And then print some new lines. 
at this point if you want to out actually output the uh, acceleration position and velocity numbers you can but we're, there's no point um, because I know it works let's just uh, so right now we actually need to actually before printing clear string we actually need to put a delay so there's a so there's no delay function in C you actually have to add it from a library so there's a function called microsleep which is new sleep it's not available in the standard library you have to add it you have to add a library which is include unisstd.h and that will add the micro sleep in seconds in, mi in microseconds and then lastly you want to print the clear screen character so the clean screen so the clean clear screen character is this thing which is backslash zero three three bracket square bracket two j um, I found this somewhere on the internet but I'm not sure if it works for all platforms but it worked in my case so you might want to look into that and that's basically it so let me just reiterate every step it's going to calculate its new velocity new position based on the acceleration calculated from force it's going to draw the corresponding number of blanks based on its position output the ball character delay for a small amount of time and then clear string and then it's going to loop again and draw the same thing okay so let's try this out all right it's right here it's beautiful look at that so you you can see how it speeds up as it goes towards the center and it slows down as it stretches to the edge right that's basically the simulation of a sprint okay so done but being Hacker Academy, let's improve this slightly. Okay, let's make it slightly more realistic. We actually want so that was a that was a perfect spring. We're considering no energy losses and it's going to oscillate. We actually wanted to stop this time, so we're going to add some damping to the force. How much damping do we add? We have to damp it based on its velocity because we cannot give it a constant damping because constant damping doesn't do anything. Right, let's just say you apply some constant force on there, it's not going to do anything. We have to apply some damping based on its velocity because velocity changes based on its force. So it's sort of like a recursive change. So, which is the bot uh, velocity. So this is not a very good way to damp, but just, just for the purpose of showing you that we can have a realistic simulation, um, this is how it works. You're going to add some damp value, it will be 0.1. Okay. This will be your damping constant. Um, let's check out the program again. So if you see now it's not going to the edge anymore. Every time it bounces it's going to bounce less and less. And eventually it will stop. Okay, we're not going to wait for it to stop. Um, so again the, another way to improve it is to fix this while loop so now that it will actually stop we can have a condition for it to stop right so what we want is that while the ball is moving right while its velocity is greater than zero um, the loop continues right but the thing is it will the velocity is zero when it starts from the beginning so it will actually exit the loop in the beginning if you put that as the only condition so we need to add a second ad condition which is while the ball is not zero right basically if it's the ball is greater than zero or smaller than zero then it will also run the loop so it's a or condition right here so it's gonna be ball will be greater than zero we'll put 0 0.5 because um, of of the rounding because it's gonna take forever for the ball to slow down to zero so 0 0.5 will be a good number to stop and then or the ball dot velocity is greater than 0 0.5 okay so it, ha it has some velocity um, this is bot dot position 
So remember that it can be positive or negative, right? When you're swinging back and forth. So we this is actually has to be absolute value. So in order to use absolute value function, we have to add a third library. We use math.h, and then we can do floating point absolute value on this condition. Oh, did I add it? No, it's not there. Okay, here you go. Hmm, give me an error. Oh, there you go. Okay, I missed the bracket. So that should be it. Save, and then we're going to run this. Okay, so it didn't run. Let's see if we I can fix this. Did I do something wrong? Uh, let's see. Two value, absolute value. This is under the same bracket. Um, if the ball position is greater than 0 0.5, or the ball velocity is greater than 0 0.5 it will run this loop but right now it's not running this loop why is that? let's debug this I want to see why it's not running so we'll do a debug. In case you want to know how debugger works in NetBeans, this is how it works. Okay, so what's the other position? Minus 39. What's the velocity? Velocity is zero. Okay, zero is not greater, right? But we know minus 39 is greater. Oh, I put the brackets on the wrong location. Damn. Okay, so if you guys haven't noticed, I put the brackets on this, so it should be the absolute value of the position and absolute value of the velocity alright okay that should fix it let's go there you go Okay, so this is taking too long, as you notice. So how can we speed this up? We can speed this up either increasing the time step or reduce the delay, but that's a lame way to do it. Let's actually modify the physics. Um, let's just make the mass lighter. Let's make it half the weight. So it should at least move much faster this way. You'll notice it's swinging a lot faster now. It's still too slow. Let's let's change it to zero point one. There you go. Boom. Exit. Done. Okay. So that's the basically the entire program. It's uh, let's see, forty lines. It's under forty lines. It's a very simple program. And this is actually a very good base for any physics simulation program. You basically have just have to change the way you apply the force, right? This is in this case we're applying a spring force equation. We can actually just apply a linear force in any direction, such as x y direction, or we can do something complicated like simulation of gravity of two objects attracting each other. Um, and a lot of the uh, physics games use this kind of. Um, 
definition. So yeah, if you want to experiment, free, feel free to uh, try something fancy, right? Here is something, uh, here is a trivia though. This is actually not a good simulation. This is not accurate. If you were to calculate by hand over time, this per step, step, the, the four steps right here actually gives you a very inaccurate estimation of where the position and the location of the ball is. So see if you can figure out why it's inaccurate and see if you can figure out a better way of simulating this. Okay? So that's some food for thought. If you know the answer, please comment in the section below. And we hope that you enjoyed this YouTube video on how to simulate springs. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again in our next Hacker Academy video. Thanks.